Hi, all the stuff uh, which I have around me is cement, peat moss, vermiculite, a foam insulation board, some cardboard, chicken wire, a roll of duct tape and a kid's umbrella. Well, all of this costs a little bit more than $50. And actually, this is all you're gonna need to make a beautiful Japanese lantern. Well, everything except for the umbrella. I used it for making the templates, but you won't have to do this because all of the templates are down here below the video. So you can throw the umbrella out of the list. Actually, the main thing in creating such lanterns is to come up with and make molds for pouring the cement mixture. The rest is quite simple. Fill the molds and you're good to go. The lantern I'll be making will consist of four parts. The roof, the main body, where a light will be, the bottom and the base. And the hardest part for me was to make the roof mold because I wanted the roof to be curvy and intricate with a nice finial and it was not so easy to make. After some thought, as I said, I decided to use a kid's umbrella as the basis for the pattern. It's much easier to understand how everything is gonna look if you have a guide like this. I transferred the umbrella patch pattern to paper, worked this over a little and tried it out, and as a result I made two wedge templates. The umbrella is octagonal, so I ended up with eight pieces of the main part of the roof and eight more pieces for the central part. I'm transferring the templates onto corrugated cardboard and cutting them out. Here you want to have the same direction of corrugation everywhere. I placed the main parts of the roof for corrugation to run along each part and on the edges of the central part it ran across the parts. After all the pieces are cut, I'm pressing the cutboard to make the pieces curved and connecting the tucks on the sides. Each piece now looks like a kind of trough. And then I'm connecting all the troughs together side to side. I'm attaching them using duct tape pieces and here I ended up with the base of the roof without the center. It didn't work right for me. The edges were pulled up too much, I needed it to be more flat, so I made cuts on all the parts and folded the insides to make them narrower. And I made the necessary adjustment to the template, so you won't have to do this. After the main part is ready, I'll make the center. It consists of triangular wedges, as you remember I placed them on the cardboard so that the corrugation ran across each wedge. I'm also making the wedges curvy and then connecting the wedges together. Here we have a bulging hat. After the top is ready, I'm inserting it into the roof body and attaching it with more duct tape pieces. And so that the whole structure doesn't soak through, I decided to cover the whole roof with pieces of duct tape from the inside, where I'm going to pour the cement mixture. It's quite possible that I could do without it and I was playing it safe, but you know, I love when everything is made well. Then I'm cutting 8 rectangles from cardboard. This will be the sides of the mold. I'm attaching them vertically along the perimeter of the roof. The finished roof will turn out to be about 2 inches thick in the thinnest part. And I'm fixing all the joints with more tape. I'm attaching the sides and at the very end I'm wrapping the entire finished roof mold with several loops of tape on the outside. Yeah, you wanna use a lot of tape here. And the hardest job is now finished. 
The other molds are much easier to make as they are not curvy. And I'll use the insulation foam board for making them. You can make cardboard molds as well, but foam board holds its shape much better and you'll not be afraid that the walls of the lantern will turn out to be barrel shaped. Here I'm making a hexagonal base. So, to make the main body of the lantern, I'm cutting six rectangles and I'm marking where the windows will be. These will be the sides and I'm also cutting small rectangles to fill the windows. The board I have is one inch thick and I'll connect small rectangles in pairs to have them thick enough to fill the walls of the desired thickness. So, I'm cutting 12 pieces like this. I'm also leaving 1 inch allowances on the sides of all the bigger parts. I'll explain what they are for a bit later. If you simply assemble 6 rectangles into a hexagonal prism, they'll sit snugly along the inner perimeter, but you'll end up with the large gaps on the outside. So I've made allowances on the sides to make these gaps smaller. I'm cutting the allowances at the sides obliquely, so that the inside of each part corresponds to the side of the template. And the outside is a little wider than that. Of course, it's hard to keep the right angle here, but the gaps will be much smaller this way, which means there is less chance of leaks. After all the parts are cut, I'll assemble the mold. First I'm hot gluing two small rectangles on the bigger parts where the windows will be. I've also wrapped the window inserts with duct tape so that there was no seam here on the finished lantern. And finally I'm placing the finished sides on a cardboard bottom template and hot gluing them to place. I'm also wrapping the finished mold with some duct tape to be sure nothing falls apart. And finally I'm hot gluing the cardboard bottom to place. You can also make it from foam board, but I ran out of it, so I decided to save a little here. Finally I'm making the bottom mold. This one is quite simple. I'm cutting the strips as per the template and also making 1 inch allowances along the short sides. I'm cutting the short sides obliquely, just like I did for the main body. Japanese lanterns often have carvings on this part and I decided to try to imitate them. To do this I'll use a plastic Dollar Tree placemat. I'm cutting it into rectangles of the size I need with a box knife. Here I'm making the pieces half an inch smaller than the part itself, both in length and width. And I'm hot gluing the placemat pieces onto the bottom parts. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. Finally, I'm hot gluing all the parts onto a cardboard base and also wrapping them with tape. And the lantern molds are ready. Next, I'll prepare the mixture to fill the molds. I've already shown this process in my videos about hypertufa pots and stepping stones and here it's pretty much the same. When I was making the stones, I added brown concrete dye to the mixture and if you watched that video, you'll probably remember that I didn't like the result. This time I decided to try adding white, yellow and brown to the mixture so that the lantern would be something beige, close to the color of natural stone and the stepping stones. I made a mixture of the three colors until I got a more or less desired shade and I'm adding this mixture to the cement. I'm adding it into the dry cement and also adding a generous handful of concrete fibers as usual. After that, I'm mixing the cement properly. And finally, I'll prepare the hypertufa mixture. Two parts cement, one part pit moss and one part vermiculite. I have already shown this recipe in detail, I'll leave the link to that video in the description box below. I'm mixing everything well while dry and after that I'm adding one part water. You'll end up with quite a dense dough, if you make a ball out of it, it should hold its shape. And then I'll fill the molds. 
First, I'm sticking a piece of rebar into the center of the roof to go into the ground. I'll make a finial on the top of it later. I'm filling the mold to about a third and placing some chicken wire here. Gary has cut it to size for me. And then I'm filling the roof to another third and placing the second layer of chicken wire and after that I'm filling the mold up to the top. I'm smearing the bottom mold with vegetable oil so that the mixture doesn't stick to the placemat pieces and I'm filling it the same way as the roof, placing two layers of chicken wire into it. I managed to make only two parts that evening, so I covered the molds with plastic and left them for a day like this. The next day I continue filling the molds. The main body is more difficult to fill. Here I've applied the mixture with my hands, slipping it under the future windows in order to fill the lower part of the lantern well. Then I'm placing a hexagonal cardboard prism inside. It is needed to prevent the mixture from falling out into the center. And finally I'm filling the mold up to the top and also installing long pieces of chicken wire into the walls where there are no windows. And I'm also placing a wire ring on top. This is not much of reinforcement actually, but I hope this will be enough. As for the base column, here I've decided to keep it easy and I'm simply filling an old leaky bucket with the mixture after smearing it well with oil, so that it will be easier to take it out later. And I'm placing two wire cylinders inside. In general, the base for this kind of lantern usually has four legs, like a stool, but I haven't figured out how to make it strong enough and, to be honest, I don't really like these legs, so I decided to simplify the design a bit. In the meantime, the first two parts began hardening and today I'll make them textured. A metal wire brush helps remove the pit particles from the surface and this makes it uneven with lots of pits where there had been pieces of pit. It looks very similar to real stone. With bated breath, I'm taking off the mold and it worked! I'll not scrape the edge here as I'm afraid to damage the faux carving, so I'm just working all the corners and edges to smooth them out a little. Then I'm turning the bottom upside down and brushing the other side. Then I'll release the roof. For some reason I was pretty sure that nothing would come out of it. The mixture had crumpled the mold and the roof was going to be shapeless and flattened. With these thoughts I brushed the edges and bottom and delayed the moment while I have to release it completely. In order not to break the roof, it's still quite fragile as the mixture hasn't gained strength. I'm placing two pieces of particle board on it. We will turn the roof over together with the board and rest the roof on it. One, two, hiff! Well, I can see already clearly that the very top didn't turn out. It's as flat as a pancake. What a pity. Let's remove it. Ta-da! Apart from the flat top, it looks really good. All that is left is to brush the entire surface to reveal the texture and make the finial. 
And by the way, I forgot to tell you about it. Before filling the mold, I had inserted the leftover foam pieces from the inside into the mold to serve as spaces so that the cardboard doesn't collapse under the weight of the cement mixture. Well, it helped. And make the finial. For this, I came up with the idea of using a massage cup from Dollar Tree. You can use any plastic vial of a suitable shape. I'm cutting the cup in half with a box knife and connecting the halves back together with adhesive tape. This is to make it easier to remove later. And at that moment I remembered that I didn't have any mixture for the finial. I was lucky to have freshly filled molds, so I'm borrowing some mixture from the bucket. I'm placing the cup on the rebar pin and finishing to brush the top of the roof. By the way, I got many questions about why I use peat for the mixture. Peat provides that very characteristic porous texture similar to a natural stone, which you cannot get using soil or sand. A brush knocks out small lumps and peat fibers from this surface, and so you'll get peats of all sizes that look very natural as if it is a real stone. After everything is ready, I'm covering all the parts with plastic for another day. And the next day I'll finish working on the lantern. I'm revealing the finial and… terrible. I don't like it. Never use such cups for the finials. Now for the main body with windows. I'm disassembling the mold and first I'm breaking off the side walls. It's a bit difficult to remove the pieces from the windows, the mixture expands slightly when cured and the foam sticks inside the windows tightly, so I'm breaking them out piece by piece. Here, of course, the mixture has flowed to the bottom and into the places where the windows will be, so here you'll have to break a thin layer of the cement mixture. Fortunately, now this is very easy to do, and I'm just trimming the edge with a box knife. And I'm also brushing the surface. I'm doing the same with the mud pie, which I got from the old bucket. By the way, at this stage I don't see any effect from the bash dye. Well, it's like nothing changed. Maybe when it dries, a bash tint will appear. At the bottom, I decided to make a small step to make it look more interesting. I made the hexagonal contour out of the foam board, just like the main bottom part, and I'm placing it on the bottom and filling with mixture. I don't have the dyed mixture left, but I hope the difference will not be so noticeable. Now back to the roof, I'll try to return the central part to its original shape. I'm applying a little mixture to the center and shaping the bulge, first with my hands and then with a trowel. Now for the finial. After I tweaked the shape of the roof, it got even worse, because half of its height is buried now and it's just a bump now. I tried to make it pointed, like a drop. The next day, I brushed the top of the roof a little and left all the parts to fully cure for three weeks. So, three weeks have passed and now I'm going to assemble the lantern at last. First I'm washing all the parts thoroughly to get rid of the particles I had brushed off. By the way, my hopes for getting a beige color didn't materialize. The lantern is still concrete grey. Obviously either the amount of dye was too small or the quality too poor. Next I'll assemble the thing. I'll use concrete mixture for that purpose. I'm making the concrete by pouring the mixture into water and stirring it really well.
After that, we're trying out the place where the lantern will sit and once I like it, I start the assembly. First we're installing the post and I'm checking if it stands evenly. Then I'm pouring some concrete onto it and installing the bottom part. More checking if it's even and now I'll install the main body. More concrete and finally goes the roof. Yeah, we've decided to glue the roof as well. It would be very disappointing to hook it and drop it and break it. So I'm going to put the light into it through the window. I haven't yet decided whether I want to repaint the lantern to make it stone-like as I did with the stepping stones. It goes so well with the water feature and I think it looks good as is. As for the light, I'm still thinking it over, most likely I'll put a small solar light with a remote solar battery here. I really like how the roof looks, although it's not perfect. The finial is a bit crooked, but if you don't look really closely, it's not very obvious, I hope. Well, I hope you liked today's video. Please let me know if you want me to make the full video about making this part of my garden. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next video. Bye!